Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the new Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, and today we're not only gonna open it up and give you, give you guys our impressions, but we're also gonna be comparing it to Apple's 10.2 inch iPad that is incredibly popular. And we're gonna see which one is the better buy for you. Now, when I first heard that Samsung is releasing this S6 Lite, I thought it was gonna be a replacement to the S5e, but it doesn't really seem so. There are a lot of differences, some things that are just very interesting interesting that we're going to be talking about. And as far as this comparison, we're going to look at the displays, the speakers, performance, how the pen support works, and much more. So we have our S Pen in here. Let's get that out. And the charger, interestingly, this is about a 7.5 watt charger compared to 12 watts on the iPad. I wonder why they didn't put a 15 watt charger like they do on their higher end models. So maybe just, you know, going for budget and let's get this S Pen out. Feels fairly light, it's flat on one side. I'm guessing it's probably magnetic. Let's try it out, yep, there you go. That is nice, if you're gonna be using it, you could just click it down if you wanna do a couple things with your hands without having to set it down. Of course, the Apple Pencil is not included with the iPad and it will not do that. Let's start out with the exterior. So you guys see them on the table right here. The iPad is a fair bit larger and that's because we have a pretty weird difference in terms of aspect ratios, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But comparing the exterior, the Samsung has a larger camera bump and actually is a bump. It's much larger overall, the module. But if we take a look at the actual camera lens inside, they're about the same size. The iPad does have a microphone back here, which is probably good. Taking a look at the bottoms, the iPad has the lightning jack or lightning port, whereas the S6 Lite has a USB Type-C port, which is great, but it's very interesting how it is offset almost at the back of the tablet. You can see that the S6 only has one speaker here at the bottom where the iPad has stereo speakers, but if we flip to the other side, the S6 Lite has another speaker, whereas the iPad doesn't. And we're gonna do speaker comparison soon. But that means if you're watching videos, you are gonna have stereo sound, which you won't with the iPad. Now, as far as the thickness, they are very close. Uh, but you guys might be able to see that the S6 Lite does not have a smart connector for a keyboard. So that is very interesting. Both of them do have headphone jacks. And once again, it's interesting how the headphone jack on the S6 Lite is so close to the edge. Uh, it is very interesting. And that's actually because of the display technology, which we'll also talk about in a bit. Now, the, the actual keys here are all on one side and these feel really nice. They don't feel cheap like on a lot of other tablets. And even though the S6 Lite is much smaller physically, it's only about 16 grams lighter than the iPad. Now let's talk about the smart connector here for a bit. Samsung calls theirs their keyboard dock connector and it was on the S5e and you can buy a keyboard cover for that tablet, but this year, Samsung decided to get rid of that connector. So they are designing this tablet to be used as a tablet and not as an all-in-one device with a nice uh, keyboard, whereas Apple is doing the opposite. This year, they actually added their smart connector and they have multiple options for keyboards, including ones that support trackpads. So this is Logitech's uh, new keyboard case that also supports the trackpad. It uses a smart connector, so you don't have to connect over Bluetooth. And we recently reviewed it, and for the money, this is a great uh, laptop replacement where you have a good keyboard, you have trackpad support, and this is just something that you are not gonna be able to achieve with the S6 Lite. I do wanna mention that Samsung does sell a Targus keyboard case on their site. It's about 150 bucks, and they say that it's sleek, stylish, and and whatever, but to me, it looks like a $30 keyboard cover on Amazon. I'm sure there's gonna be third-party accessories for this device. I probably wouldn't buy that because it just looks thick and really old and it's using Bluetooth for that kind of a price. I think it's kind of crazy. Now let's go ahead and get this set up. I'm here on the section where you choose your recognition. The S5e had a fingerprint scanner on the side. The iPad has Apple's Touch ID right here on the bottom. You just tap it 
bam, we are logged in. And it's interesting to see that the S6 Lite actually doesn't offer that at all. You could choose facial recognition, which just uses the camera, so it's not that secure. It could be fooled by a picture of you, or just use a pin. So we do not have a fingerprint scanner at all. And now let's compare the displays. Both of these use LCD displays. Samsung is no longer using that OLED display that they had in the S5e, which I absolutely loved. Now, as far as sharpness or detail, the iPad has 3.5 million pixels. Apple calls it their Retina quality display. Everything looks nice and sharp. And with the S6 Lite, they actually lowered it from 4 million pixels last year to 2.4 million pixels for the S6 Lite. So it's no longer OLED and the actual sharpness and detail is quite a bit lower as well. Now for reading text and stuff like that, it doesn't look too bad at this distance, but there do seem to be some scaling issues. Like when I look at this folder, some of the icons, I see just a lot of aliasing, and I think that might be because of the new resolution and the aspect ratio. This is a five by three aspect ratio display compared to their usual 16 by nine. Now 16 by nine is already wider than the four by three of the iPad, uh, but five by three is even wider than that. So that is a very interesting choice by Samsung. So that means that even if you're watching uh, just a 16 by nine aspect ratio video, let's maximize this, you're gonna get black bars on the top and bottom. Now it's better for widescreen video, but for a lot of things, it is um, an interesting choice, I'll say. One benefit though with this wider screen is that I can't hold it in just one hand, and if you're like me with larger hands, you'll be able to do that, which you can't do that with the iPad. One area that the S6 Lite is better than the iPad is that it's using a laminated display, so you don't have a gap between the screen and the touch surface, and that does help with reflectivity. So if you guys see right there, the iPad is definitely more reflective. And comparing brightness, the iPad is just slightly brighter, but it is super close. The iPad also has better viewing angles, but ultimately, if you're gonna be using these in bright rooms or outdoors, you're gonna have an easier time seeing what's on the screen on the Samsung S6 Lite. And now let's compare pen or pencil support for these two tablets. Uh, the S6 Lite comes with this S Pen. It definitely feels very, very lightweight, lighter than the one with the S6, so it is a more budget option. It does still have a button here, and as soon as you bring it closer, it will actually hover, so it is connected smartly, and then you get this little menu giving you options for uh, things you could do with the S Pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch that. And as far as the iPad, we have the Apple Pencil. This thing is not included. It costs $100, it is pricey, but it feels like it's about four times the weight of the S Pen. It definitely feels higher quality. We don't have any sorts of buttons, but let's compare how they draw. The iPad does a surprisingly good job for a budget inexpensive iPad. There is very little lag, even though it's not as good as the iPad. A lot of people use these. And as far as pressure sensitivity, it is actually really good as well. So if I am just barely touching this display, it's thin. I push down, it's much thicker. And then I can just mix that up. You guys see how responsive that is. And then now let's go ahead and go to the S Pen. And do you guys hear that? We have a little drawing sound. It's very interesting. So this is also uh, touch sensitive or pressure sensitive. So if I press harder, it's thicker, if I let go, it's thinner. Not as big of a difference though. And then, can you guys see that lag? It's actually worse than I expected. And it's also kind of inconsistent. If you guys could see that, sometimes it like catches up with the delay. And it's almost like there's just frames that are missing or something. Overall, I would say if you're gonna be somebody that you know wants to do a lot of drawing and writing, I would definitely push you towards the iPad just because not only does it have a lot less delay, it's better sensitivity. You guys could see that right there. Uh, you have a huge amount of apps on the App Store that are designed for iPad, a massive selection. And that is really nice if you're gonna be serious with the S Pen or the Pencil. And now let's compare the speakers. You guys put on your best pair of headphones and let's take a listen.
And there you guys have it. You let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Obviously we're listening through a microphone, through YouTube, so I'll give you guys my opinion. And I just have to say, wow, what a difference. Having those stereo speakers be not only on the bottom, but just having one on the side makes a big difference uh, for just whole immersion when you're holding it horizontally. But not only that, the volume of the speakers themselves it's a lot louder and actually the quality of the sound coming out is better as well so i know that samsung got rid of the two speakers it used to be a quad speaker system on the s5e i don't know how much of a difference that made because it still sounds fantastic and the ipad is much worse now on top of the speaker difference we also have a difference in the aspect ratio as we talked about before with this 5 by 3 aspect ratio instead of 16 by 9 we do have a few black bars here added for 16 by 9 content but on the ipad you see that these bars are pretty massive and if you're going to be watching movies say on netflix the black bars get even bigger on both and at some points the black bars look like they're almost the same size as what you're watching with the 21 by 9 video on the ipad so the screen aspect ratios along with the differences in speakers and having those stereo speakers be on each side with the samsung if you're mainly wanting the device for watching movies you're going to do a lot of that the samsung is definitely a better option now one interesting thing to note though is in the youtube app i'm only seeing 1080p 60 on the Samsung usually gives you high resolutions whereas iPads they're limited to 1080p 60 and that could be because of the processor that is inside of this Samsung so let's go ahead and get into performance I have Geekbench 5 opened up right here I'm going to go ahead and run the CPU benchmark now last year Samsung was using a 670 Snapdragon processor and that was the biggest limitation I really like the S5e on everything but the performance this year they actually switched to one of their own processors the 9610 let's see what it gets and the ipad is still using the a10 fusion processor as it did last year and that one is about four years old now what a big difference now as far as the multi-core it's only about 10 to 15 percent difference um, with the s6 Lite being slower but as far as a single core we have 346 compared to 768 and the a10 fusion is a four-year-old processor now and it looks like the S6 Lite is actually slightly slower than the S5e from a year ago. And that is a major disappointment to me because that was my biggest complaint was the performance. It was kind of sluggish and it wouldn't be future proof if you uh, buy that device. Um, so that is definitely a bummer. So it looks like when Samsung switched to their own processor, it's probably a cost saving measure not to try to get better performance for the money. And now let's compare the graphics performance. I ran Geekbench 5's compute test and our budget cheapest iPad basically has doubled the graphics performance compared to the S6 Lite. That is a massive difference when, you know, we're talking about these tablets having such close price points. So another kind of disappointment performance wise. And let's go ahead and finish off comparing the cameras. Here is a shot with the both of the rear cameras. They are both eight megapixel. And then here is a shot with the front facing camera. The iPad uses a 1.2 megapixel compared to a five megapixel on the S6 Lite. And here's the comparison of the front facing camera for video and the microphone. Right now this is the S6 Lite. And then this is the 10.2 inch iPad as far as the quality. You guys let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better down in the comments section below. And here, once again, Samsung lowered the quality of the cameras compared to last year's S5e. It went, I think, from a 12 megapixel down to an eight megapixel. It does still look better than the iPad, at least the front facing camera, which that is good. And let's go ahead and just talk about prices. The iPad comes in at $329, but there are tons of sales. Uh, I'll remind you guys that we have links in the video descriptions and you can get it as low as $250 dollars at times i spent 280 for this one whereas the s6 Lite, it is 350 dollars now that does include the s pen which apple does not include theirs but if you score it for you know 250 280 you add in the pencil the prices are fairly similar which one do i suggest for most people well i think most people are gonna be happier with the ipad um, i think there's a massive difference in quality for the pen support that's the main thing that samsung added this year and we have that now but the pen quality is not great and there are a lot of downsides to this 
uh, S6 Lite. For example, they removed the keyboard dock connector, the cameras got worse, the display is no longer OLED, it is lower of resolution, uh, the performance didn't get better. Um, so a lot of things that I complained about, they're not better. Whereas the iPad, it's not an, a great device like the higher end iPads, but for that price point, it packs in a ton and a lot of people, a lot of Android guys will actually buy iPads just because of the App Store. There's a huge amount of optimized apps. The pen support is great and that, that's what makes this a great value. And on top of that, we have the Smart Connector this year, which Apple added, and we can connect keyboards like this Logitech uh, with the trackpad, which makes it a nice budget laptop alternative or Chromebook alternative and Samsung got rid of that this year. So honestly, if you're thinking about buying the S6 Lite, I would go as far as saying, go buy the S5e instead. As you guys saw, there are a lot of features that Samsung scrapped just to be able to drop the price point by $50 and include the S Pen, which is a pretty cheap pen, and it's not even that great. So if you want the Android tablet for watching movies, get the S5e, the display is better, it's OLED, it has quad speakers, and a lot of other benefits, including keyboard support. I think that is the better option for you guys. We'll leave a link down below as well. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts as well in the comment section. Which one do you think is the better buy? Thank you guys for watching. You can click that circle above to subscribe. And if you wanna see a couple great videos, maybe the review of this keyboard case for the iPad, we will have that right over there. This has been Max, and we'll see you in the next video.